What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're taking a look at the Zephyrus G16 and specifically the three configurations, one with the 5070 Ti, one with the 5080 and one with the 5090. And we're gonna see how much additional performance you get when you upgrade your GPU. Now for pricing, we're looking at $2799 for the 5070 Ti, the 5080 is $3399 and the 5090 is a whopping $4399. So we're talking about a $1600 price increase from the lowest tier to the highest tier. Now, all three of these laptops have 32 gigs of LPDDR5X memory with Intel Core Ultra 9 285H. So the primary goal for today, of course, is to figure out how much extra performance you get by spending that extra money. Uh, for testing, we did 2560 by 1600 for our resolution, manual fan mode in all three laptops with no overclock, no undervolting. Games are typically on the highest possible settings, uh, with the exception of Counter-Strike 2 on the low preset, though we did also run DLSS on quality for most games except for Counter-Strike 2 again, which we ran at the native resolution. 2x frame gen is also used in many of the supported games. Expedition 33 we did test with and without frame gen as that game recently got frame gen support. A to 64 RAM speed test, you can see we got 77,000 for our read, 75,000 for our write, about 94,000 for the copy. The copy is quite good. Latency at 145 nanoseconds approximately. Latency is not that great. The read and write is also just slightly above average. The copy though is quite a bit above average. It kind of sucks though that uh, the latency isn't as good. The read and write is not that amazing. Overall, this RAM will get the job done, but it's definitely not as fast as it could be. Taking a look at our SSD speeds, we got 6,358 for our read, 5,862 for our write, uh, and overall the SSD speeds are gonna be plenty fast for just about everything that you'll need to do. The main downside here is that you only get a PCIe Gen 4 drive and no Gen 5 support. If you want a Gen 5 drive, you'll need to get a laptop that actively cools it with a cooling loop, which is included in many of the top laptops like the MSI Raider. Cinebench R23, we got 21,361, which is excellent for a thin and light gaming laptop. Single core 2084. Uh, just to keep in mind again that if you get a thicker machine, you can get up to around 30 to 38,000 for the multi-core score with an HX chip. Uh, 1178 for Cinebench R24 and 125 for the single score. Again, very good single score, but multi-score legs behind the thicker laptops. For Steel Nomad, this is the most GPU bound test that we did today. Only 15 watts being utilized on the Intel Core Ultra 9, which means that this, the GPU can really ramp up all the way up to 129 watts, 130 watts, quite frequently on the 5080 and 5090. I'm seeing 125 watts on the 5070 Ti, so five additional watts approximately on the 5080 and 5090 here. Notice the boost clock, uh, 2250 for the 5070 Ti, which means it's pretty close to the optimal boost clock for a 5070 Ti, where a 5080 and 5090, you know, the boost clock is significantly lower, about 1800 and 1500, 1600 for the 5090. And of course this means uh, it just directly correlates to the number of CUDA cores that these laptops have. You know, obviously the more CUDA cores that a laptop has, the higher the frequency that it can run at, the more performance you're gonna get. So obviously if you can do 175 watts to the 5080 and 5090, you're gonna get those boost clocks to go a whole lot higher. Um, you know, a typical RTX 5090 can get around 61 FPS. Uh, so you're, you're losing about 20% off of the performance here in Steel Nomad for this 130 watt 5090 compared to a full 175 watt 5090. Now in Steel Nomad, the 5080 is 16.8% faster and the 5090 is 37% faster than the 5070 Ti. So this has the biggest gap in performance by far. And I think that uh, is primarily because we are so GPU bound with very little CPU wattage being utilized, allowing the gap to be much greater. Next up, we have Baldur's Gate 3, 180 FPS starting out here on the 5070 Ti, 205 FPS, for the 5080 and 208 FPS for the 5090. So the 5080 and 5090 really, really close. And honestly, the 5070 Ti is still very, very close as well. And a big part of that is looking at the wattages. We're looking at 47, 45 watts going through the 5070 Ti and 
37 going through the 5080, 46 going through the 5090, and this reduces our GPU wattage uh, significantly with the 5070 Ti, 5080 doing about 95 to 105 watts, and the 5090 doing about 97 watts. So this just reduces how much uh, wattage goes into those CUDA cores on the 5080 and 5090, and this is gonna close the gap significantly between these three GPUs. So in the end, we're looking at 180 FPS, 191 FPS, and 197 FPS. The gap is so close. The 5080 is only 6.1% faster, and the 5090 is only 9.4% faster. That is very, very crazy to me. I mean, unless you just got money to burn, it's very hard to justify that level of performance increase for how much it costs. 55 FPS right now for the 5070 Ti, 58 for the 5080, and 60 FPS for the 5090. So we're just looking at a, about a six to seven FPS increase right now from a 5070 Ti all the way up to a 5090. Uh, that is very crazy. For Expedition 33, we're looking at 7.4% faster on the 5080 and 11.1% faster on the 5090. Overall, that's only about a 10% increase. Now, turning on frame gen, the gap does increase. We're looking at an 8.8% increase on the 5080 and a 14.3% increase on a 5090. So at least when you integrate the frame gen features, you're able to, I guess, utilize uh, the GPU's performance a little bit better at this tighter power envelope. But uh, again, notice that we're not getting the 130 watts utilized here on the GPU, 115 watts on the 5070 Ti, 116 watts on the 5080, 112 watts on the 5090, and that's because the CPU is sipping wattage at a medium pace, only about 20 to 30 watts, and that lets the GPUs get a bit more dynamic boost than in Baldur's Gate 3 at least. So um, overall, Expedition 33 is going to play great on all three of these machines, but it will be a bit smoother on the 5090. Next up, we have Counter-Strike 2 on low native resolution here. We're looking at around 80 watts going through the GPUs in this very CPU bound game test. Now, graphics are on low, which again, will reduce the amount of GPU utilization um, and will focus the performance of Counter-Strike around the performance of the CPU, the Intel Core Ultra 9. Now this is gonna be very typical of many of the eSports games. If you're an eSports player, there's pretty much zero reason that you should be getting the 5090. Uh, as far as I know, pretty much that's gonna be the case. If you're running games on low, the performance gap will literally become the silicon lottery for the Intel Core Ultra 9 285H. Um, because yeah, it's just the way it is. When you're very CPU bound, the GPU you have just matters a whole lot less. For our Counter-Strike 2 results, all three just scored a little bit over 300 FPS, 301 FPS for the 5070 Ti, 312 for the 5080, and 303 FPS for the 5090. So that means our 5080 Intel Core Ultra is actually probably the slightly faster CPU between these three laptops. Cyberpunk 2077. This is uh, ray tracing on ultra, DLSS on quality, and frame gen enabled on 2X frame gen. Well, you know, 79 FPS versus 86 FPS versus 94 FPS currently in the test. Looking at the wattage pull, all three are doing a bit more than 100, about 105 to 110 watts typically, with the CPU pulling about 25 to 35 watts. Now, since Afterburner is bugged with the 1% load tracking, I did measure all these benchmarks with frame view as well to ensure that we have accurate 1% lows being calculated. Now, in Cyberpunk 2077, for Cyberpunk 2077, we're looking at the 5080 being 10.3% faster and the 5090 being 20.25% faster than the 5070 Ti. And same for the 1% lows, about 20.9% faster for the 5090 as well. So overall, you're definitely getting a solid performance jump in games like Cyberpunk 2077. Now, Doom Dark Ages had some of the biggest performance gap between these three, at least for 1% lows. For the 5070 Ti versus the 5080, we're looking at 13.3% performance increase on the 5080 and 20.0% increase on the 5090. Now, 1% low performance on Doom Dark Ages 
for the 5070 Ti was not as good. And I think this is because we were running out of VRAM. So it just reduced our 1% low performance on that 5070 Ti. Going over our final results, the gap between the 5070 Ti and the 5090 was 20% for our average FPS, but our 1% lows had 58% performance improvement on the 5090. And the 5080 was 41% faster as well. So having that extra VRAM will really boost your 1% low performance in particular in a game like Doom Dark Ages. Next up is God of War. We're looking at 81 FPS for the 5070 Ti, 92 FPS on the 5080, and 103 FPS on the 5090. This is gonna give us a 13.9% improvement for the 5080 and a 25.58% improvement for the 5090. Next up is Hogwarts. This is with 2X frame generation, everything set to ultra settings. Um, including ray tracing, 3.1% performance improvement on the 5080 and 7.8% improvement for the 5090. 1% lows are significantly better though on the 5080 and 5090 with a 13% improvement on the 5090 for 1% lows. So again, when you're running out of VRAM or close to the VRAM limit, I think you're gonna see 1% low performance be significantly better on the 5080 and 50. 90. Next up, we have Starfield with the 5080 being 8.9% faster than the 5070 Ti and the 5090 being 15.2% faster than the 5070 Ti. 1% lows were pretty close. This was tested actually with FSR 3 with frame generation enabled because DLSS is currently bugged in the current version of Starfield for some reason. Overall, performance on all three of these laptops is gonna be great. Ultra settings are enabled aside from the FSR 3 being turned on. Um, 113 FPS versus 122 versus 128. Next up, we have the Witcher 3 with the 5080 being 9.7% faster than the 5070 Ti. The, the 5090 being 22.6% faster is another one of the games where we're getting more than a 20% gap in gaming performance. And that's where I guess if we're getting more than a 20% gap in gaming performance, that really is indicative of the GPU being able to pull more than 100 watts. Notice that in The Witcher 3, we're only sipping about 20 watts to the CPU, which lets the GPU boost to over 120 watts. And this increases the gap between these three chips. So bringing us up to 22.6% faster on the 5090. You know, in a game like The Witcher 3, you're gonna get a lot more mileage out of that 5090 and 5080 chip. Now, Monster Hunter Wilds, we had some very interesting performance out of the 5070 Ti. You can see that we are struggling with the VRAM limitations of the 5070 Ti in particular. The 5080 is pulling 14 gigs of VRAM, the 5090 is doing 19 gigs of VRAM, and the 5070 Ti is struggling. You know, it's only pulling about uh, 10 gigs of VRAM. And notice the 1% lows are really hit hard on the 5070 Ti. That's because we're running into that VRAM cap. Now, obviously, if we were to lower our textures down to medium or to low, we could get quite a bit more performance out of the 5070 Ti. But I just want to point this out that this is definitely going to be a limitation on the 5070 Ti. That will be more and more noticeable noticeable as games utilize more VRAM in the future. Overall performance in Monster Hunter Wilds, we're looking at 9.6% performance increase in the 5080, but 1% lows were 85% better. The 5090 had a 15.9% increase in performance, but 1% lows were 107.7% better. So overall, that is a huge difference for 1% low performance, but overall performance is gonna be a lot tighter. So with proper game optimization, I think the 5070 Ti would be able to compete a lot better. When factoring all of these tests together, the 5070 Ti versus the 5080, the 5080 is 7.9% faster average FPS. The 5090 versus the 5080 is only 4.6% faster. The 5070 Ti versus the 5090, we're looking at a 12.8% faster overall performance. 
And when we take a look at our 1% low performance, we do get a bigger gap because of that 12 gig VRAM limitation being hit in Monster Hunter Wilds in particular, but also in Doom Dark Ages, we had a bigger gap in performance, increasing our overall averages for the 5070 Ti to 5080 to 14.7%. 5080 versus 5090 is only 6.8%, and the 5070 Ti versus 5090 was 22.4% faster. I just did some quick math. We're looking at $109.58 per additional frame that you're paying for if you want to upgrade to the 5090. So that's not great. In GPU bound games where you're getting close to a 20% performance bump, it definitely feels a lot more worth the money. Um, but the simple fact is you're going to be able to play basically everything on the 5070 Ti and a certain handful of titles, you'll need to turn the textures down at QHD resolution these days, at least if you want to have smooth 1% low performance. But that's the main downside to the 5070 Ti, I would say, is that it's just going to be less future proof. And so I could see uh, a valid argument case to say go for the 5080 version, especially since the price gap between a 5070 Ti and a 5080 is only $600. And there's a $1,000 price gap between a 5080 and a 5090. So unless the 5090 has a huge, huge sale, then the 5070 Ti is the value buy with the 5080 being the more future-proofed value buy. So. That's my conclusion right now for the Zephyrus G16 5070 Ti versus 5080 versus 5090. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one. Brandon. Out.